independent India for a few an age of freedom and prosperity for the many a continuing sentence of poverty skyscraper and slum serf and landlord worker and parasite in the countryside and in the city the poor remain bound by their experience of an unchanging reality But throughout history there have been those who have not accepted those who have struggled for a just society and in struggle many have fallen and many taken prisoner these are the prisoners for whom there is no escape from the dictates of their conscience emergency proclaimed on the 26th of June 1975 state repression reaches new heights in india thousands of persons of varying political beliefs are arrested hundreds tortured and atrocities inflicted on a defenseless people इमरजेंसी लगते वक्त दो बार मैं अरेस्ट हो चुका था उसके बाद जब मैं छुटकर आया दूसरी बार इमरजेंसी में आफ्टर माय सेकंड रिलीज वी हैड प्लान्ड अ बिग प्रोटेस्ट टू मार्क द फर्स्ट एनिवर्सरी ऑफ द इमरजेंसी तो उसके लिए हमने बहुत सारे पोस्टर पैम्पलेट वी हैड प्रिपेयर्ड मेनी पोस्टर्स एंड अदर अंडरग्राउंड लिटरेचर फॉर दिस हमने एक वन ऑफ द पोस्टर्स शोड इंदिरा गांधी इन जेल एंड स्टेटेड द लास्ट हॉल्ट फॉर द डिक्टेटर 30 जून को अरेस्ट कर लिया गया इन सब चीजों के साथ एक कमरे में So, on the 23rd of June I was arrested in a room with some of this material. They took us to Parliament Street police station that night and beat us up demanding to know where the posters had been printed, who our comrades were and other such questions. कैसे आप काम करते हैं? 24 जून को रात को हमें उन्होंने एक हथकड़ियां लगाकर एक बल्ली हमारे The next day they placed a stick behind our necks and handcuffed us to the window. खिड़की के साथ इस तरह काफी देर एक डेढ़ घंटा बाद देवर थ्री ऑफ अस एंड विद इन अ फ्यू आवर्स वी ऑल बिकेम अनकॉन्शियस फिर एक घंटे बाद बेहोश हो गए थे दे गॉट अ लीड ऑन वन अंडरग्राउंड शेल्टर ऑफ व्हिच आई यूज्ड टू विजिट व्हेन दे केप्ट अ वॉच ऑन दैट प्लेस एंड सम डेज आफ्टर दे हैड स्टार्टेड दिस वॉच व्हेन आई वेंट देयर टू in fact to leave the place to abandon that shelter and to shift our literature at that time i was arrested after the arrest i was taken to the offices of b branch the bolshevik branch of bombay cid i was kept in that office for about 8 days during which i was questioned continuously not allowed to sleep for this whole week i was well tortured in many ways being hit on the neck or the back kicked in the back then i was caught by the hair and shaken around handfuls of hair were pulled out in this manner the next day it became a little more strenuous and i was made to lie down on a table and beaten on the soles of my feet one night i was my hands were tied up to the beams of the window and i was kept in that position for the whole night 
then I was uh, put in a very st uh, peculiar position, which is where your arms are raised up, tied at the wrists, and a lati is placed between your shoulders and the neck, so that when they released me from this position, I collapsed and fell down on the ground. But after eight days, the Bombay police thought that I would not talk, so they gave up, and they sent me to the police lockup. In the lockup, I stayed there another month. Then the Andhra police came here to try their torture. The Andhra police are much more experienced in torture and investigation. They tortured me mainly by bending back my hands from the wrist, bent it backwards so that even now the hands have been damaged. They also pushed pins into the tips of my fingers. It so happened that, however, I had to be taken to hospital during this period and when I was taken to the hospital, I was admitted to the hospital by the doctors there. And at this point, they then arrested my wife. See, I was arrested one month after Dave was arrested and I went uh, to the B branch CID office in Bombay. Well, within a few minutes, I was taken uh, to the assistant commissioner of police and along with them, there were the three or four Andhra officers were there and they started questioning me. And within, in fact, half an hour of my uh, arriving into the office, the Andhra police officers threatened to rape me and uh, they said unless I talked, uh, they would just not let me go and they would see that I was broken in. If the walls of the jails could speak, they would speak of terror, but they would speak also of courage. They used to beat up detainees with ferocity when there were 83 Iranian students arrested and lodged in central jail Tihar uh, because uh, they had uh, held a demonstration uh, in front of the Iranian embassy against uh, the torture of the political opponents in Iran and against imperialist policies and Shah's policies. They were lodged in the heart jail and they were going to be separated and distributed over various cells and other jails. So they refused. They said that we are arrested under the same charge and we will remain together as long as you want to keep us. Then they asked, the, put the jail warders on them. They tried to beat them up. When they resisted, uh, they brought even CRP inside the jail. And I exactly remember the date at 3.30 uh, in the afternoon on 29th April 1976, the whole jail was uh, filled with tear gas and we were trying to uh, wet our towels and put it on our eyes so that we could see and hear the cries and the shouts of the Iranian students who were being very fiercely attacked and brutally beaten up by the CRP. And eight of them were made nearly unconscious by police beatings. All these things used to happen in Indian jails. The jail life, in any case, was uh, the source of strength also because we thought that all of us, irrespective of our political opinions, are part of a people's movement for a democratic society where people like me or my other friends will not be kept behind the bars for their political convictions and there will be a kind of democratic uh, society where onward march of the people and their movement will not be restricted by draconian laws. For the middle class, the emergency brings a taste of what the poor have always known. For the poor, it brings more repression. Long before the emergency, from the Telangana movement onwards, thousands of suspected revolutionaries had been killed and an even larger number imprisoned. After the peasant uprising in Naxalbari in 1967, the label Naxalite came to be used against all those who potentially threatened the established order, from landless peasants to middle-class students. False prosecution witnesses, kangaroo courts, and prolonged conspiracy trials had become the order of the day. I went to India at the beginning of 1970, intending to spend six months there, and was somewhat horrified by the poverty and the signs of injustice and oppression which I found. Um, ended up by marrying an Indian friend whom I'd known in London. And of course from that time I became um, more closely identified with the Indian people. What were the circumstances under which you were arrested? I was arrested uh, from the home of a poor peasant in a village near the border of Bihar and Bengal in the district of Shingbhum. Um, early one morning, just after I'd eaten my breakfast, 
by armed police who arrived at the house and uh, just took me away. Were you charged with anything? I was not formally charged uh, for three years, although I was accused of being an axolite by the police who arrested me. They even ac accused me of being Chinese and of being uh, an agent who had smuggled arms from China into India. Uh, but in fact, no formal charges were laid for three years, after which time they charged me with being involved in a conspiracy to overthrow the Indian government. Was the treatment that you got typical of the treatment that other prisoners in those areas got? Well, the treatment which I got was um, in many ways not typical because the Indian government has still got the same set of jail rules which were made by the British colonialists and which, were, which provide for preferential treatment of Europeans. Uh, however, I did write a petition asking not to receive this treatment. But despite that, due to the relics of the colonial mentality and so on, I was uh, treated less harshly in many ways than other prisoners. As for the conditions in the jails, first of all, they're extremely overcrowded, uh, both because many political opponents of the regime were being arrested, and um, also because people were not brought to trial, so that even people arrested on petty charges, petty theft or for brewing illicit liquor, were kept in jail for three or four years, sometimes for longer, without any kind of trial. So that the jails were becoming more and more overcrowded, more and more insanitary. Sanitation was extremely primitive, the medical attention was very poor, particularly in the, the smaller jails. Um, there were lots of infectious and contagious diseases. I can mention perhaps scabies, typhoid, smallpox, malaria, dysentery. And um, the medical treatment was almost nil. Apart from that, there were severe water problems. Clothing was not supplied according to jail rules. And um, visits were very arbitrary, that means that the jail authorities often refused visits or took bribes to give people visits, letters were censored, newspapers were heavily censored, and in general one had a feeling that um, most of the prisoners there would not have any chance, let alone of a trial, but of being taken to court at all. You mentioned torture. Um, did you ever witness torture in the prisons? Uh, I did not witness torture in the prison. I witnessed brutality, beatings. And, of course, there was an instance when I was in Hazaribagh Central Jail in July 1971 when 16 prisoners were shot dead and 31 wounded by prison warders. Uh, but, in general, the torture which I heard about had taken place already in police stations. And that was very severe. I mean, in many cases, people were actually tortured to death in the police stations. In other cases, they were beaten unconscious. I heard of a case where a person had been dipped bodily into boiling water, and so on and so forth. But I think that since the emergency last year, the reports which have been coming through, and some of them from very reliable sources, mean that torture has become more widespread in India. Um, some of it does take place in the jails. I heard, for example, recently from somebody that um, electrode torture was being used in uh, a country jail in Bihar, where electricity even was almost unknown at the time I was there. So it seems that the methods of torture are becoming more sophisticated. Nagalandi <laughs> তখন আমি ওখানে ছিলাম তো সেখানে একদিন সকালবেলা this happened in nagaland when i was there a pregnant woman was sitting in the fields with her husband and some others suddenly a contingent of the border security force began firing at them many fled but many were killed including the husband the woman was wounded in the thigh as she ran the next day, her body was found. Her head had been cut off. Her fetus had been torn from her stomach with a bayonet and placed in her mouth. She had been raped repeatedly. Such things have happened. People have been burned and even half-charred bodies have been raped. 
পুলিশ লকআপে যে মারধর করেছিল সেই চোটগুলো আমার মোটামুটি চলে গেছে দি ইনজুরিজ আই সাফারড ইন পুলিশ লকআপ হ্যাভ ডিসঅ্যাপিয়ার্ড বাট দ্য ওয়ানস আই সাফারড ইন জেল স্টিল রিমেইন যেমন জঙ্গল অপারেশন ওখানে আছে যাতে করে ওই দুই ধরনের জঙ্গল অপারেশন নাম করে সমস্ত গ্রামে গ্রামে in jail i had demanded an end to the jungle operations in which brutal tortures were committed against the villagers i had demanded that the army be removed from nagaland and i went on a hunger strike for this from the second day of my hunger strike i was removed to the jail office and tortured tomo tokhon amake ditiyo dini aur jail er office e tule na ana hoy ward er bhitor theke ebong ene amake amar upor oi lathi লাঠি ইত্যাদি সমস্ত চালানো হয় এবং তখন আমার কোমরে ঘাড়ে এই সমস্ত জায়গাগুলোতে এই অ্যাজ এ রেজাল্ট অফ দ্য টর্চার মাই নেক এন্ড ওয়েস্ট ওয়ার ইনজিওর্ড এন্ড ইভেন নাও আই ক্যান নট সিট ওর স্ট্যান্ড উইদাউট ওয়েয়ারিং দ্য সাপোর্ট প্রেস দাঁড়াতে পারি না ভালো বেশিক্ষণ বসতে পারি না শুয়ে থাকতে হয় আর কি Shirabad Central Jail in Andhra Pradesh. This was the first official execution of political prisoners in independent India. We learned the news almost hours after they were, they were hanged. And the spontaneous reaction was prisoners, not only political, but all prisoners, including the criminals, pickpocketers, boycotted food for one day. At that time, we were in Vishakhapatnam Central Jail. Later on, when we were taken to Mushirabha jail, where they were hanged, we learned the details that the prisoners, including the two who were hanged, learned of it only 12 or 13 hours before their hanging. And from that night to the 1st December early hours, 5 o'clock, there was a continuous chorus of songs and they all boycotted food and sang entire night. ফোরস and as they walked through the gallows they raised their voices and gave slogans viplavam vartillali long live revolution to which the voices from far away words responded and then they were hanged January the 26th 1976 the Republic Day parade a military band plays sare jahan se acha hindustan hamara better than the rest of the world our india March 1976 
1977, the nation goes to the polls. Amidst jubilation, the Janta Party comes to power with a solemn oath to restore democracy. Many prisoners are released. But the existence of political prisoners did not begin with the emergency, and nor does it end with it. A 1974 report by Amnesty International estimated that over 17,000 political prisoners were being held in West Bengal alone. During the emergency, the figure for the whole country rose to over 100,000. And a year after the emergency ends, there are still over 2,000 political prisoners in jail. Naxalites, Nagas, Mizos and others. Even this figure may be misleadingly low, for it is common practice for political prisoners to be categorized as criminals. The prison system is divided into classes. The C-class cells are reserved for the poor majority. Conditions in these cells remain what they have always been, insanitary, overcrowded, and less than human. Amongst the elite, the argument is occasionally made that if prison conditions are improved, the poor might prefer prison to their lives outside. Perhaps the greatest gain in the defeat of the emergency was the gain of civil liberties. And yet there are many political prisoners still in prison, for instance, Naxalites and Nagas and Mizos. Well, I think I, I'm in agreement with you that uh, as long as there are prisoners of uh, conscience or political prisoners in jail, the expectations from the Janta Party have not been fulfilled. And I think there should be continuous pressure on the Janta Party government. Also, I believe a time might come when some kind of a mass movement might become necessary. The public opinion, young people, Sarvode movement, the press, all these help in this process. Do you feel that committees can be appointed to ensure that prison reforms take place? and no tortures are committed again under any circumstances? Well, I think committees by themselves would not be sufficient. It depends on what attitude the government takes on the recommendations of the committee. And then the whole process of implementation is very complicated. By the time it comes down to the implementation level, it goes through a sea change kind of thing. Again. I would emphasize the need of public vigilance, public uh, awareness of what is happening in the jails. Because even today one finds that there are rules, uh, they are broken by the superintendent of the jails, the jailer, uh, because they are the masters and they do what they like. From time to time, the police and governments of various states have released reports to the press stating that some Naxalites have been killed in armed encounters with the police. Following widespread apprehension that these encounters are staged, a civil rights committee headed by the former judge, Mr. V. M. Tarkunde, began in April 1977 to collect evidence about the deaths in Andhra Pradesh. The evidence collected so far clearly establishes that many of the alleged encounters never took place, that in fact, Citizens were liquidated in cold blood and a number of policemen of varying ranks were involved in the torture, killing and subsequent disposal of the bodies. The alleged encounter in Girayapalli forest. Immediately after the proclamation of emergency, the first reported encounter is said to have taken place in Girayapalli forest in Medak district. It is now known that the following persons were killed. Janardhan Rao, Murali Mohan Reddy, Sudhakar and Anand Rao. They were all within the age group of 15 to 25 years. The evidence discloses that every day these boys were taken to the forest duck bungalow in the morning 
and brought back to the police lockup by night. Upon their return, they could hardly stand. Their clothes were invariably blood-stained and they would be groaning in pain. On the 24th of July 1975, at about 8 p.m., all the lights in the lockup were put out. The boys were stuffed into a police van and taken to Girayapalli Forest. They were tied to four trees from neck to foot and were blindfolded. When the sub-inspector of the APSP 1st Battalion was asked to shoot them, it appears that he refused. For refusing to obey orders, he was abused by the superintendent of police. The boys, before they were killed, raised slogans. Your husband was arrested at the same time as you were. Is there anything that can be done to demand his release? Uh, well, I feel that it would be immoral even to demand just his release when there are so many thousands of people in the same conditions and in worse conditions. For example, he is being held in a jail where prisoners are not normally kept in bar fetters as they are in both of the jails in which I was held. All those people um, suspected or termed as Naxalites were put into iron bar fetters from the moment they were arrested, even though these are, according to the jail manual, only to be used as punishment on maniacs or people who have tried to escape, uh, people who are dangerous to the, um, for other prisoners and so on. But uh, they are in fact used and some people have been in bar fetters now day and night for up to five years. And so at least I'm thankful that he is not in those conditions. And whatever I do would be for the general release of all political prisoners, not just of one person. This is the jail where I spent for one month when I was arrested and uh, that is the another jail where I spent nearly one and a half years but we can't get nearer to the jails because the authority won't allow us. I see. So what has been your activity after being released from jail? Actually I was formerly a medical student and after release I resumed my study and now I am connected with the prisoner's release movement. Our committee is functioning all along West Bengal, all over West Bengal. We have gathered all the democratic forces within our platform and we are mobilizing public conventions, processions, exhibitions regarding police tortures, etc. Have you been successful in West Bengal? Actually, we have successful uh, to some extent because uh, the West Bengal government in the first cabinet meeting, they have decided to release all the political prisoners unconditionally. On the other way, the central Janata government, they have not yet taken any decision regarding the political prisoners. This is our uh, Bandha Mukti Ganadavi Committee office and uh, here from we are launching our movements for the release of political prisoners. The Bandha Mukti or Ganadavi Prastuti Committee is located in Old Post Office Street, Calcutta. Like other civil liberties bodies, it depends on public support for its survival. The office is open only in the evenings. During the day, it belongs to a lawyer. Most of its members have been political prisoners themselves. Pijush Dey, the convener, spent three years in jail. His wife Tanushri, a year and a half. Their son was born in jail. He was named Biplab, or Revolution. The early hope of release and redress for all political prisoners is belied as questions begin to be raised about the violent beliefs of those who are still in jail. Release is made conditional on the renunciation of violence and many prisoners refuse to sign conditions. Who are the originators of violence? Who are its consistent perpetrators? Who the victims? Atrocities against the landless and the land poor 
are a daily feature of rural India. The big landlord is the Raja of his area. He often owns a fourth or more of the land belonging to the village. He employs both slave and free labor for his domestic and farm work. Women from the poor quarter, he abducts for his use. He maintains a small private army equipped with spears, lattes, and unlicensed homemade guns. The landlord shoots with his illegal weapon and shows the police his licensed one. The police are generally in his pay. In any case, they share a common bias against the agricultural workers who comprise largely the lower castes and harijans. The slightest gesture of resistance from these sections is branded as Naxalite activity and used as an excuse to launch a campaign of terror in the countryside. In the city. The workers of Swadeshi cotton mills had been agitating for payment of back wages. On the 6th of December 1977, following an incident of stone throwing and kheral, police entered the mill and began firing. The workers were trapped inside. The firing continued for nearly two hours. How many workers were killed? The government says 11. Some workers say 60. A common figure in Kanpur is 105. Of the 230 workers arrested after the incident, many swear that they were forced to clear corpses from the mill. Some were thrown into boilers and others into the river Jamuna. against the dictatorship. Do you feel the trend towards unity will continue now that the emergency is over? Maybe not all those forces will still continue the struggle for democracy in the country, but definitely we can bring about a broad front of workers, peasants, middle classes, even a section of the small capitalists, the patriotic capitalists opposed to foreign domination. So only with such a broad-based unity, all those forces and parties and individuals representing these classes can we really advance the democratic movement in the country? In fact, I think it's important to remember that uh, throughout the period of the emergency, in fact, the struggle against the emergency, we have only won back our right to struggle. Today, will class struggle be emphasized even amongst the Gandhians? Well, I think it's inevitable because the problems the Gandhians have to deal with include uh, exploitation by one class or the others, the inequality in society which is also part of the class system and they are, their aim is to abolish all this. The Gandhians would also like to convert the owning classes or the exploiting classes, educate them, change their attitudes, etc. That may not be very successful, but that also is a factor. The end of the emergency brings new impetus to the democratic movement. The peasant resumes his struggle against the feudal oppressor. The worker demands that his labor be rewarded, not with bullets, but with the just share of the wealth he helps create. The defense of democratic rights of the underprivileged becomes an essential aspect of the growing consciousness for civil liberties. The movement for the release of political prisoners continues. Old organizations such as the Legal Aid Committee of West Bengal and the Organization for the Protection of Democratic Rights, Andhra, are joined by new ones such as the People's Union for Civil Liberties and Democratic Rights. In Kerala, public pressure forces a minister to resign for his role in covering up the torture and murder of an engineering student named Rajan. But the incidents of torture and murder are numerous. 
and the instances of guilty officials being punished are rare. What sustained you through your five years in prison? Um, I think the main thing is that one is not alone. Uh, even though one is sometimes physically alone, people are kept in solitary confinement, one has the feeling that there are many thousands of people suffering in the same conditions for the same cause, that is, the cause of trying to bring about a more just society in India. And also, in other parts of the world, people are suffering for the same reason. And I always had the feeling that people both inside and outside the jail were with me and uh, were giving me their moral support. Wherever the oppressed begin their struggle, I feel I must join and become one with them. For the individual and his narrow politics are not important compared with the cry of the oppressed for liberation. This song was composed by the prisoners of Midnapur jail. The night is endless. The rice jars are empty. My eyes fill with tears. My heart is on fire. How will I protect you, my mother? I hear the mountains shake and the mansions of the rich crumble as the people march upon them. Do not stop me, mother, for I go to make the bright sun rise. of injustice are not merely the prisoners of the state but of their own conscience. The struggle for their release is therefore a part of the struggle to end injustice and gain true freedom for the people of India. <laughs> 